Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I bring you guys this fourth, fifth, sixth video. Ah, oh, I lost count. Um, I'm bringing you guys this next video in this entire series of small box, big game. Um, I'm not going to go through these just yet, but I want to go ahead and tease for the next video my um, talk of the Oniverse family game, family of games, uh, including Erbian. Um, so I'll talk about this one a little bit more, and that one probably not as much detail since I'm going to do a playthrough. But for this video, if you guys haven't already checked on the title, is going to be a playthrough of Erbian. The reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to do another solo playthrough because I thought the other one was kind of fun. And um, there's not many playthroughs of Erbian um, on the internet, so I want to go ahead and just throw my hat out there to add to the collection. So I'm going to go ahead and do a playthrough or teaching and playthrough of Erbian and uh, definitely be on the lookout for the Oniverse Family Games, which should be the next video in the series. So let's go ahead and start this. Uh, discussion of Erbian. So I'm going to do a playthrough of Erbian, so I'm going to set it up here all nice-like. Um, but first, I'm going to go ahead and explain the game, because this game does get a little messy and a little confusing visual, visually speaking. But it's a relatively, relatively um, straightforward game. It's kind of math the game. That's the best way to explain it. Um, throughout the game, your goal is to claim cities, and you claim cities by placing them in balance. Once, once a city is in balance, by, by meaning that it'll have both so meaning that I'll have uh, a equal amounts of numbers on both the top and the bottom side. So one side will be positive, and the other side of it will be negative. So once the city is in balance, then uh, like, let's just, well, actually let's not assume, let's just gonna make it balanced. Once the city is in balance, then uh, you'll be able to claim the city, and that city will come as you know, a completed city in your victory pile, and you'll get another city to replace it. So there's gonna be four such cities out there at a time, and you want to claim all the cities. Basically, that's the gist of the game. There's 12 of these total. Um, don't really think there's anything, oh, right. And each city has a certain restriction that uh, corresponds to the different type of cards. So this city, for example, can only accept fire cards, which is that symbol there, and cloud cards, which by virtue of luck of the draw, we happen to have only fire and cloud, so that's a coincidence. Um, so, yeah, that happened. So that's. The primary objective of the game is to collect all 12 of these city cards. Now, as far as the cards that you're going to be using to collect these city cards, these are the cards here, the various cards that you're going to have. Um, pretty much most of them are good. Of course, in a, in a standard Erbian or Oniverse fashion, um, there are nasty cards, which are these over here, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but there are cards here. And these are the different various cards that you have. And the artwork, I think the artwork is really cool. Some people are not too terribly um, fond of the artwork, but I, I like it. I think, it's, I think it's interesting. So each card has a different value. Um, some cards show up more than once, of course. So these are spiders, there's negative three. And then these are the um, slugs, or fish, I guess. Negative two. And then here's a anteater, a positive two, so on and so forth. So different numbers, different values. They do different things. Um, er, well, they do different things number-wise. And they're all for the sake of math. On your turn, you can choose to do one of two things on your turn. You can choose to either play a card into the play area or discard a card. Now, when you play a card into the play area, you have to, of course, follow the rules of placement. So, for instance, if I want to play this one fire here, I can do that. Because this is a fire area, I would not be able to place it here because this is a cloud and a wave area, which is depicted by the little small symbols here. Um, so you can choose to do that. Or you can choose to do a discard, which if I choose to discard, on my turn, it said I play a card, I would take a card and just throw it out of the game, and it's in the discard pile. I can choose to do one of two things from that. I can choose to swap two cards placed. So let's say I wanted to move these two cards for some reason. Say I move this and this. And uh, those, the swap you do, it has to be on the same side. So I can swap two negatives or I can swap two positives. It's up to me, all my choice. Uh, and then I draw back up. Or I can choose to discard a card to check for balance. Now checking for balance takes all cities that are in play into account. So right now we just have two cities set up. Normally we have four. Um, but it takes all cities into account and you check for balance. Checking for balance checks to see if anything is equaled out. So for instance, this one is currently set to be equaled out. So it's negative two, negative one, then a positive two, positive one. That's three on both sides, so zero total in the middle. And that means that I can claim this city as a victory point and I have one more city towards my goal. And another city comes out. And the next thing that happens is if you have a situation to where something maths itself out, meaning that if I had this situation, let's say for instance, this was already set up, 
which is a negative two, this is a negative three, and then this is a positive two. When I discard the card to check for balance, I can also choose to, if I want, to kill cards that, are, that cancel each other out. So these two cards here would we'll, we'll be able to cancel each other out because they're, they're both twos by themselves. Or if I had some combination of three, which I can't find a positive one here. Give me a second. There we go. Uh, or if I had a situation like this, I can choose to say, all right, I'm going to cancel this three and get rid of these because that totals out to be three. And basically continue on playing the game. So those are the options that you'll have when you when you uh, discard your stuff. Now, of course, in standard Urbian fashion, there are things that show up that kind of, you know, mess up your day. And those things are the nightmare cards. The nightmare cards are the thing you do not want to see. So the nightmare cards only show up when you're about to draw your cards. Uh, there are eight of these total in the deck, and the effect that they have is when they show up, you must choose, or you have to immediately resolve them. Your choices for resolution are one of three nasty things. Those things are to either place it out on the city, on the higher side, meaning that if I had this situation going on, where this is a positive four over here, and this is a positive five, or sorry, negative five down here, and I got a nightmare, I can choose the places on a city, any city of my choice of the four that I have, but I have to place it on the higher side because it's a plus or minus five. So that would be, if I placed it here, this would become a negative five, meaning that this would be a negative 10 down here and a positive four up here, making it that much harder to actually get the city in balance. So that's one thing I can choose to do. The next thing I can choose to do is I can choose to, if I want, I can choose to discard this card and kill the balance or kill a city that's in balance now when i say kill i don't actually mean kill but if there was a city that was imbalanced so let's say this one was imbalanced before i drew the nightmare and the nightmare shows up and i say all right let me just get rid of a city's balance so i would remove this city's balance i would not claim that card at all and this city will be restarted uh, in the normal starting pattern and then it just starts over so that's the second thing that can happen and the last thing I can choose to do if a nightmare shows up and comes to mess up my day is I can choose to, instead of taking this into my hand, or sorry, instead of uh, placing out here on the, on the play field or clearing out a city that's in balance, I can choose to discard this card along with four other cards from the deck. And then that's it. That's fully resolved. It's done. It's damage. Any nightmares that were revealed, that were revealed in the process of discarding these four cards um, those would have to be resolved as well. Either I'll have to place them out, or I will have to kill City's Balance, or I have to do the same thing again. So Nightmares speed up the game a lot. So there's eight of these in this deck, and as far as the deck is concerned, there's not a lot of resources to begin with. Um, I do have card sleeves on my, um, on my stack of the game, so my stack looks a little bit higher than normal, but just trust me when I say the Nightmares show up at the worst possible times, and they mess up all kinds of stuff. Wrecking all kinds of havoc. That's basically the game. So that's the overview of how to play the game. Let's go ahead and jump into the actual playthrough. So I'll set it up and uh, we'll get started here. All right, so we have everything set up. I shuffled up the cards. I'm gonna go ahead and talk through the actual dealing out of the things because I do feel like it's important to know um, how to actually put stuff out here. So um, let's go ahead and go through the setup. Uh, basically, the first thing you do is you take four cities. So four cities from the city stack and you place them up, face up. I like to place mine sideways. You can place yours whatever orientation fits you the best. Whatever makes you happy, whatever feels right. And I'll zoom in a little bit more so we need that much space. Boom. We have our city set up here, and now we do the initial filling. Now the initial fill, we deal all the cards before we deal our cards to ourselves. And in the start of the game, uh, any nightmares or any chaos that shows up, uh, does not go out into the thing. Uh, you shuffle this back into the deck. If I see a nightmare in the initial startup, then I am going to go ahead and uh, reshuffle or take it out and shuffle it back in. So these are the cards I'm starting with. Notice that when I start the initial pool for each city, or when I start doing the initial fill for each city, I ignore completely the placement restrictions of the type of cards that can be placed there. Uh, that's one key thing I want to bring up. That's one key thing I want to bring up. So I'm just looking for positives and minus. All right, so that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and deal myself my four cards. So one, two, three, four. Okay, that's a nightmare. Four, 
It's bound to happen eventually. And now all the cards have been set up. The city has been set. Uh, one other rule I forgot to talk about too, I'm going to go and mention now, um, for anybody who might have just been watching this for the rules and the setup, is that if you do claim or claim all four cities that are active at the same time, as in they're all in balance and you just discard a card and you claim them, uh, you also get one additional card without having to beat that card from the top of the deck as a victory. So that's good to use. Uh, it is important to utilize that to win the game. Otherwise, I don't think, I don't think I've ever won a game without doing that at least once. I mean, I've, out of the 40 games I've played of this, or 70 or 80 games I've played this, because I used to play this a lot, um, I've won two games that I can recall. Maybe three. Alright, so while editing, I decided to split the playthrough into its own separate video, so that way it would be all together, because it was about 40 minutes of me playing the game. Um, so feel free to go check out the part two of this video to watch the full playthrough.